Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of It, I am Penge and welcome to this quick review of Jurassic World Evolution. It was released a few days ago now, developed by British developers Frontier Developments, and I thought it was worthy of a look because, because dinosaurs, <laughs> that's it really, just because dinosaurs. Basics first, what is Jurassic World Evolution all about? Dinosaurs! Of course it's dinosaurs. Big dinosaurs, little dinosaurs, all sorts of dinosaurs. That is the big draw to this game really. The chance to create dinosaurs, play with their genetics, tinker a little bit here and there, and then design your own dinosaurs is certainly the main focus of this game. Fancy mixing a little bit of shark dinosaur in with your triceratops? Then you can do that. A lizard ceratosaurus hybrid? Go for it. If you've got the right things in the game, you can go ahead and do things like that if you so wish. And the good thing is they're so beautifully presented. They look so, so good on screen. And then when you've created one and release it into its enclosure, you get this lovely little cutscene of the dinosaur taking its first steps. This dinosaur that you've just created, you've brought to life. You get to see it in all its dinosaury glory, taking its first steps, its first look around the world. And that is, it's tremendous. It's a really good bit of this game. But away from the dinosaurs, there is a park builder because you're building a dinosaur park. So whilst the dinosaurs are the main exhibits, you still need a functioning, profitable and secure park around them. You build buildings, you make profit, you make sure the park's got enough power to keep going, you do missions for these various divisions that pop up, you research stuff and you deal with situations as they rise. And to be fair, it's an okay park builder. However, a lot of the micromanagement type elements of running a park have been removed. So, for example, you don't need toilets and you don't need janitors and such like. You don't recruit specific members of staff with skill sets. You just basically add another staff member to a particular place. All that's been removed. So some people would call those aspects of a park builder detailed. Some people who like that sort of thing. Some would probably call them boring if you're not really into the park building, sort of management side of things. But whatever the case, these elements have been stripped away, leaving you with a more let's build important stuff and get on with it, shall we, sort of feel. It's a little bit more sort of clicky-click, get on with the buildings, get on with playing with the dinosaurs. Whether you like that or not is down to how you like your management sims, really, but it does allow you more time to play with the dinosaurs, which, as we have established, are really the main draw of this game. Another big plus is that everything is very slick. It's very polished. It's very well presented. It seems like a lot of work has gone into the user interface and the menus and the whole usability of all of that. Other than one little aspect, which we will look at later, it looks good, it works well, and it's not difficult to use. So, the parks you're building are in the theme of Jurassic World from the newer 2015 and 2018 films. The game is set in modern times and also has buildings from those films in the game, like the Innovation Centre. I think it might be called the Samsung Innovation Centre, possibly in the films, but it's only called the Innovation Centre in the game. Also, Claire Deering from those films makes an appearance and is voiced by the proper actress, which is a nice touch. But the devs, the devs are clever and they've made sure that there's a big hearty dollop of nostalgia thrown into this game too. You've got the tremendous original John Williams Jurassic Park theme, and there is also Dr. Ian Malcolm, voiced of course by Jeff Goldblum from the original 90s films. That is a nice touch by the developers, making sure that fans of both the original films and the newer films will find something to like in the game. And that nostalgia, that 1990s feel, will be a big draw to the older audience, such as myself. I loved Jurassic Park when it came out. I thought Jurassic Park was tremendous. I remember having a row with someone at school because they said it was a rubbish film. And we had a big old row. I'm pretty sure I put them right. I'm fairly certain I put them right. But the nostalgia is very much intentional in this game. However, on to the potential downsides. Number one is the cost. I think it's very well documented that it's quite an expensive game. In the UK, it costs £44.99, so pretty much 45 quid, which is certainly on the very high end of cost for a PC game. Normally, that kind of price of games is either a proper real premium triple A super game or kind of console games, so real you know, high quality console games are about that much. But for a PC game, you don't really see PC games for £45. So um, yes, as good as the game is, as polished and slick as it is, I think it's the fact that it's part of the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World license sort of world that's inflated that cost. If it was just Dinosaur Park Builder, and there were no Jurassic Park references, and no cast members sort of doing the voices, I think the cost would be lower, much, much lower. I justify the cost a little bit by knowing that my son, who is five, will love to play this. He will spend hours and hours watching the dinosaurs, creating new ones, giving them silly names, sort of driving the little cars around in the park. He will love all that. But whether you can justify the cost yourselves is entirely down to you. Another potential downer is 
a lot of, I say a lot, a bit of repetitive clicking. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you'll find you have to click over and over again on a lot of things, like fossils to extract DNA. I mean, you can queue them up, but then when your expedition people go out, which is another thing you need to click on, that I don't think you can queue, you then have to go back to the fossils and click them all again. And essentially you just kind of go click, 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 click. There's, there's no sort of, you don't do anything with them. You just simply click them and their little bar to totals up and then you're done. And it can get a little bit samey. It can get a little bit samey. Also, another thing which is a little bit samey is the style of the buildings in your park. They look good when they're built. And you know, there's no denying that the graphics are lovely and they're detailed, but there's no element of customization really, apart from doing some upgrades. And they're all sort of fairly formulaic upgrades. Some of the buildings have little slots where you can put an upgrade down. And when you put an upgrade in, the building will change. But all the buildings look the same. So if you build yourself, whatever, a power station, the one power station will look like another. If you build yourself a t-shirt shop or a clothing shop or something, they will all look the same sort of thing. So there's no element of customization along in the build process. You just slap a building down, connect it to the power and a path, and that's kind of it. So visually, all of your islands, of which there are five, once you get through the whole game, will probably end up looking a little bit samey. Then replayability comes into question. Once you've worked your way through all of the islands in the game, will you come back? I'm not sure. It depends on what you want from the game. If you're just after getting to the end and completing the game, then no, you probably won't come back. You will get to the end, you'll consider it's finished, and that's it. Replaying it won't offer any new challenges. But if you're really into the customization of the dinosaurs, and you want to create every single possible type of dinosaur with all the optimal stats and features, then you may well come back and it might have some replayability value for you. But yes, I think for the sort of the person that just wants to complete the game, just to sort of go from start to finish and say, yeah, tick, 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 I've ticked all the boxes, it's now finished. There is very little sort of replayability value once it's done, I would say. Another minor nickel, and this is now minor, this is a minor, minor nickel, is building placement. I didn't come across this a lot, but when I did, it was very irritating. Some buildings just couldn't be placed because the ground was ever so slightly uneven. Now there is a terrain editing tool, it's a bit fiddly to work, but it's sort of okay, which you have to deploy to level the ground, but it does get a bit tedious when you have to level out a tiny little bump in an area just because you want to build a shop or a building. You would think that when you put a building down, the building team, the actual, you know, the contractors who do your building work, might go through and level out that little tiny, you know, bump in the bump in the ground, the little, <laughs> no, I don't know, the molehill that's popped up or something. You thought they might go and sort that out, but um, but no, they don't. So a minor niggle, a minor niggle, but it did get a little bit irritating at points when I was trying to place buildings down. So in summary, Jurassic World Evolution is a polished, well-produced game, which looks lovely. And it really does capture that whole Jurassic Park, Jurassic World vibe. It does it very well, although it does have its flaws. Will it get a bit samey after hours of playing it? Probably. Does it justify the cost? If you're a big, big Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World fan, then you'll probably want to buy this. You'll feel like you're there, you're in the world from the films, you're in that world, and you'll probably love it. Massive dinosaur fan? It might be worth it just for all the tinkering you can get up to with the dinosaur genomes. If you're solely a park designer fan, then I would say don't get this now. Possibly don't get it at all. There isn't that much of an in-depth park management experience to be had. You'll feel disappointed. It's more focused on the dinosaurs and the park is sort of around the dinosaurs, really. If casual fan of games a bit like this, maybe hold off until the price comes down. It's very expensive for what it is right now. You might be able to catch it on a Steam sale or whatever at some point. But that's it for now. Perhaps not as short as I expected this review to be, but there we go. Let me know what you thought about this review. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Am I spot on? Am I talking absolute total nonsense? Let me know in the comments. Please let me know. If you found it interesting or useful, then please do leave a like and also please do subscribe. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Let's follow Matt Spence, aka Duke Nukem, as he chases after a dirty villain. There are a lot of angry people still. I don't know why. Never ever employ him, he's terrible. This place is full of rats. Timothy Robles with your kind of crazy eyes. You have tea leaves in one of my shops. <laughs>